So I'm Professor Alexandra Lazic. Everybody knows me as Lex. Um, I am the Associate Dean Research in the Faculty of Education at the moment and I've been here for 11 years. So with respect to my research, I'm probably best known uh, nationally and internationally as a methodologist and I started off my research career doing my PhD for fun and for really deeply personal reasons. Uh, I was looking at the migration experience of my parents who came from Hungary at the end of the 40s after the Second World War and I really had a calling to collect that data for myself and for my children and the work was about essentially displacement identity and belonging but I, I, I think I was one of the first if not the first arts-based educational research thesis in the country and I remember at the time that my supervisor, Professor Robin Ewing, uh, really encouraged me to be reading the seminal work from the United States and that's how I started. And then I had no aspiration at all to become an academic. What I thought I would do was stay in public high schools, which is where I was as a secondary visual arts teacher, and be very happy there till the end of my career. As it turned out, uh, I got the opportunity to come and work as a sessional tutor for Southern Cross University and then a position became available and I came to Southern Cross full time. My work since then has largely traversed areas of uh, arts-based educational research or ABA, specifically artography and I've been very fortunate to work with some amazing folks and, and global leaders in, in that methodology. I am an artist myself so it makes a lot of sense for me to be working in my inquiry through the arts, with and through the arts and um, it's interesting how a research career can actually unfold. Um, you know I, I led a, a research group really early on in, um, in the faculty and then the School of Education called CREARE, which was the Creativity, Arts and Research and Education Research Group. And when that folded, I became part of C, which is the Sustainability, um, the Environment and the Arts in Education Research Cluster. And it was my, through my work supervising students with colleagues in C uh, that I, I came to be more sort of involved in climate change education and environmental education as a conceptual underpinning of my work, but through the methodologies of artography and arts-based research and it's from those associations and largely actually my supervision of HDR students where I leaned really into um, environmental um, methods and developed um, a particular style of walking inquiry called walkography. So it's, it's been an unfolding of um, methodologies uh, that have had to do with not only networking at international conferences with the big giants in my field and then being fortunate enough to publish with them and be on international grant applications and, and funded projects with them and also my relationships here at Southern Cross University with folks in different uh, fields. So in terms of, of my work now it's very transdisciplinary and I say transdisciplinary rather than interdisciplinary on purpose. Uh, it cuts across and through science, STEM, the envir environmental education and ecologies of practice and socio-ecological learning but also uh, theoretically through a range of places like post-humanism and process philosophy which is a lovely fit with art making. Artography is a methodology that was developed at the University of British Columbia by a group of seminal scholars there um, and Rita Irwin at the University of British Columbia who's a distinguished scholar there and a professor uh, is, is seminal in the field in, and in developing the methodology of artography and artography is A-R-T with forward slashes or obliques between the A, the R and the T and originally the A, the R and the T were to represent the identities of the artist, researcher and teacher and the spaces um, in and within and between them 
the methodology has matured quite beyond that into much more um, broader uh, conceptualizations of the concepts around art making, researching and education. And it's essentially using those three pillars uh, to um, hold work that uh, um, traverses them. One of the things that we are doing increasingly here at Southern Cross with uh, my colleagues and others in different institutions is participatory artography, where we are doing um, work mainly with children and young people as agentic researchers and so they become artographers and they essentially create uh, data through art making and through experiences in place uh, and largely that's because of my interest in place and displacement and uh, we are creating some very amazing um, publications and uh, artwork from those things where we've had national international exhibition of the children's and young people's work where we invite them to not only work with us on these projects but also to publish with us which has happened several times and we will continue that work. Lately what I've been doing is working with disengaged youth in uh, participatory artography and that comes from my own experience and interest as a high school um, visual arts teacher and head teacher over 25 years and I spent 16 years in Western Sydney in Mount Druitt teaching in some of Australia's most challenging schools and so I have a particular interest in youth who are disengaged because the arts can do for them what they um, that what other subject areas cannot so the values that drive my research have to do with my lifelong mission really of improving the experiences of children in schools through the arts, specifically the visual arts. And, and that mission has really driven my teaching in schools for 25 years and also the work that I'm now doing uh, as an academic. And so I see the arts as being a gateway to all sorts of important experiences and competencies that children can't get in other areas of the curriculum, particularly those that are the most marginalised or the most at risk. The impact that my research has, because it is participatory largely in recent years, is that it gives children and young people experiences as not only artists and art makers but also as researchers and it gives them a lot of confidence and competence with respect to their knowledge and um, their expertise in their own lives and I think that's a very important point to make that children are experts in their own lives, they are experts in their own education and they have a lot to say. We have seen through you know youth-led climate change strikes and actions and protests that this generation of children and young people that are coming through will have a lot of responsibilities that we have left for them. And it is important that they have a say in the types of research that's happening that concerns them, not as objects of research, but rather as researchers. It's really important that children and young people have the ability to express and to have the agency to create and present data that's very important for my generation to honour. So the best piece of advice I'd give to anyone starting their own research journey is to do or to focus on something that you are absolutely passionate about. It's a core advice I give all of my HDR students and anyone who's looking to become an academic is there is no point doing work that doesn't light you up, that doesn't 
feed you, that doesn't entertain you, that doesn't stimulate you. You're going to be spending a long time as a PhD student, for example, or a master's by research student. So it's important that you're doing something that is that you are really passionate about, that is core to your interests as an educator and as a researcher. That's probably the best piece of advice I can give you because not only will you be spending your time in your PhD studies, working through a very, very hard and long marathon slog, but it sets you up for the next five years of your academic career, so you better like it. So <laughs> I guess a little fun fact about me is one of the things that I've really enjoyed lately is painting with my feet. And the reason for that is that, and I've done it a lot with collaboratively with kids and, and other academics, is that there's something about painting with your feet that's not only a deeply sensuous experience but it's also a great leveller and what I found as an art educator of oh, 40 years or so is that one of the things that art educators can do is to flatten those um, those I guess nervousness and intimidation around making art and once you put paint on the ground and get folks to paint with their feet they loosen up they have a great time and they're not so invested in how it's going to look. They're much more interested in the experience and the sensuous quality of paint on your feet. And it's fun. It's really great fun. So as Associate Dean Research at the Faculty of Education at Southern Cross University, my advice to folks coming through their HDR programs and going on to a research career is to understand that we are, as academics, in a very privileged position and that we have a responsibility to uh, justify the investment in us and our education and to try and have a mission to do the best we can in the world and particularly in these catastrophic global times.